As a former professional hockey player and now sought-after sports surgeon, patients come from across Canada to be treated by Dr. Jason Smith, Chief of Orthopedic Surgery at Rouge Valley Centena Centenary Hospital. And today we are speaking with Dr. Smith about avoiding sports injuries. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Kate. I know you're very busy and uh, it's great for you to take a little bit of time out because you know what? We want to take care of Dad this week. That's it's right. It's all about Good. And, you know, we want to keep Dad active and healthy, and, and you're a real proponent on that, right? Oh, absolutely. All about, like, do a active every day. The best thing you can do for so many aspects of your health, you know, you talk about heart health, mental health, all these things are tied into your physical health, yeah. into your exercise regime, what you do to stay active. Um, the risks associated with being active and maybe the aches and pains are way made up for it with the benefits you get to your heart, uh, your psychological health, and everything mm -hmm. else for your body. Well, I, I was really intrigued when we were talking a little bit before the show that you were telling me how people think at a certain age you're done. Like, you know, that's yeah. why my body starts to fall apart. I'm 40, I'm 45, I'm 50. Yeah. But that's not actually true. It's not the age per se when you start to fall no, apart. No, uh, it's amazing. Your physical health has to do with your activity level, what you're doing. When you look at the real data on aging, physiology doesn't just fall off at 40, it doesn't fall off at 50. Your physiology keeps kind of going and it's a very gradual decline. It's somewhere around 85 that truly our physiology falls off. What falls off is our lifestyle. What falls off is our eating habits. What falls off is how much we exercise. So we actually can't blame our bodies till about 85. Before that, there's a lot you can do to maintain it. And so if you just maintain your activity level, when you look at world records, when you look at elite athletes, the people that maintain the same level of activity, mm -hmm. what they did when they were 15, what they did when they were 20, 25, 30, if you maintain the same frequency, the same volumes of activity, yeah. your health, your body can take it. Your body can, can keep you going until about that, that age, that cliff, and that's around 85, 90 years old. Right, so there's really no excuse for us to kind of use yeah. that age as, a, as an excuse to fall no, off. No, my metabolism now has fallen off yeah. since I turned 40. No, no it's, it's to do with your lifestyle that's changed. And, I mean, uh, you understand life gets in the way, but that's why you really got to take that extra effort and the extra time to, to book time for activity, for exercise into your schedule. The rewards that you'll reap for that over decades is, is immense. Right, and that's every day. Like, we should be doing something active every single day. You know, kids, they play every day, you know. Then when you look at, you know, a 20-year-old, a 15-year-old, what they're doing, you know, they're playing every day. And if you can just maintain that consistency that's what your body likes right. you know you don't have to go and be training for a marathon every day you don't have to be going out and playing two hours of hockey just a little something a 20 minute walk yeah. you know if that's done every day you know you can't get to the golf course and play 18 holes go hit you know a half a bucket of balls yeah. and just something like that just to kind of keep moving we hear all of our uh, data from cardiologists you know heart health you have to do you know the whatever the guidelines are, I might get this wrong, you know, 40 minutes of sustained cardiovascular exercise every day. Yeah. But for your body, for your muscles, for your tendons, your ligaments, it's actually much less. You just need to do something. Okay. You know, just get out, get moving, get around, just get the heart rate up, get your muscles loosened up a little bit, get a little bit of stress I into your tendons, and then things don't fall apart. That's then you can kind of just keep going. Yeah. So just and a little something every day. You don't have to day. be training for a marathon. I mean, no. you, just, you just get up and move. Get up and move. Go out for a walk. Um, meet up with a neighbor. Just it, 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 as much as a 15, 20 minute walk is just I immense versus doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now of course, you know, you go for that 40 minute walk and now you need that much more again. But yeah. to go from zero to just a little bit has a huge physiological benefit. Sure. Right? Sure. And then Makes after sense. that, how much you add more. Yeah. You know, it goes up a little slower, but it's from nothing to just a little bit, your body will love you. Right, okay. Now, this is a little controversial, and we won't have a lot of time to okay. chitty chat about it too much, but you and I were talking about stretching, and, and, and you know, I always thought that you stretch first to warm up those muscles yeah. before you do the exercise. And you're saying now. Mm. Yeah, well, we're finding that the principle that we're trying to teach people now, it's warm up, start easy, get your muscles warm, warm up, stretch, 
do your activity and then cool down. So going into a, just a cold stretch and trying to pull in your muscles might actually be detrimental. So it might you know, actually do a little damage doing that. Yeah, you can. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. People yeah. just jumping into a yoga class or jumping into their stretching. And Don't jump into anything. Yeah. But come back because we'll be right back with Dr. Jason Smith and we've got a lot more to talk about. <laughs> We're back with Dr. Jason Smith, Chief of Orthopedic Surgery at Rouge Valley Centennial Hospital, and, and we were talking about stretching and how that's a little bit controversial now, and that makes so much mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after we've done something super active, mm -hmm. and um, usually your body does hurt the next day. Maybe yeah. you've done a big bike marathon that that was just on the weekend. A lot of people participated, and I hear yeah. them complaining still Tuesday that they're sure. hurting. Right. Yeah. Um, how long are we going to go, though, before we go, you know what, this pain isn't going away. Yeah. I should go see somebody. In general, for overuse type injuries, aches and strains, there's about a 48-hour window. We always say swelling is maximal at 48 hours. You know, that's post-op, that's after an injury. So don't just say, well, the next day I'm hurting. Oh, my God, now two days after I'm still hurting, you know. Ice it, rest it, give it about 48 hours, two or three days. And then the things you want to look out for is if the pain is increasing, the okay. pain is getting worse. So you'll get that little blip at about 48 hours. And as long as things are getting better, as long as you're able to manage it, don't worry about it. It's going to go away. Okay. It's the pain that keeps coming back. It's the pain that doesn't go away. That's when the red flag's got to go right, a little so bit. So persistent pain, then you're going to go see your family doctor. Yeah. Okay. And at what point does the family doctor say, I'm going to refer you over to an orthopedic? You know, every family doctor kind of has their own uh, level of comfort with that. And that's your relationship with your family doctor. Some family doctors, you know, are giving injections and giving you workout regimes and very active in that. Other ones just aren't as comfortable with that. So that's your relationship with your family doctor. Some, you know, send it to us right away. Mm -hmm. You know, we're happy to see it right away. Some family doctors want to be very involved. And that's just your relationship and with that's, them. And, and so you have to determine, he'll determine whether or not he's comfortable going yep. any further before he refers you. Exactly. What type of ortho surgeries are done over at the uh, Rouge Valley? So Rouge Valley, we have a, an amazing uh, joint program mm -hmm for hips and knee replacement where we do actually, it's, it's revolutionary, we do actually six weeks of prehab with the patients. Okay. Let's get them exercising before, then do their surgery and then uh, exercise and do your rehab after. Okay. We're finding a lot of these people don't even know how to exercise at all. Before. And then now you give them surgery and you tell them to exercise, they don't know what they're doing. So you know, you teach them how to exercise, get them into that routine have their surgery and go and we're finding the benefits of that are amazing. Well the benefits would be too because usually you're going to be a bit fitter for the surgery. You're, if you, you need to be healthy going into yeah. surgery. I always tell my patients the stronger and fitter you are going in the quicker your recovery is going to be coming out. Absolutely. So exercise and keep it going. I'm going to fix what's wrong so you just keep it going up to that point and then it just carries through beautifully. Really? Don't shut yeah. it down just because you're having surgery. No. Yeah. Now what do you specialize in? So I'm a sports orthopedic surgeon so that's ligament injuries of the knee, ACL reconstructions, uh, shoulder instability in these hockey players, yeah. uh, uh, upper extremity stuff, elbow injuries and in pitchers, these kind of things. Okay. So anything that can happen to a sports uh, athlete on the field, I can fix, I would say. Right. Well, you're the ortho surgeon for the Blue Jays. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What kind of, you must see all kinds of injuries with those. Folks. Well, those guys are interesting. It's like, it's not like hockey where all of a sudden it's banging the guys down. It's very little of that. Mm -hmm. It's more just I'm there every day um, working with the team. There's three of us orthopedic surgeons that work with them. And we're just watching these guys break down slowly. Like that pitcher is just breaking down slowly. So I'm there evaluating, yep, you've broken down a little more, broken down a little more, broken down a little more. It's amazing the stresses that are on these guys' oh, arms. Imagine. Especially, the, well, the pitchers, of course, right? <laughs> it's unbelievable. If for, for every fastball that they throw, it's the equivalent of picking up a 40-pound weight, yeah. throwing the ball, and then their arm weighs 100 pounds. So then they have to pull back so lift 40 pounds, lift 100 pounds, and do that 100 times, 
and see how your arm lasts. Yeah, they're yeah. they're amazing specimens. Honestly, well, you know, I mean, they're doing really really well. That must be due to you. Absolutely, it's oh, all me. Of course, 100%. yeah. Great, yeah. they're really I'm doing. doing a great job this year. Yeah, good job. <laughs> great success. Yeah. Way to go, Blue Jays. It's all because of Doctor Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me now, what are some of the other things? Like, how do you when you have a pitcher who's doing that repetitive, repetitive yeah. throwing? I mean, will eventually? I mean, can you save that arm? I mean, that that. I just don't know how you can save it when he's, you know, when he's retired. Well, no, these guys, after, after they've retired, I mean, there's such amazing physiological specimens mm -hmm. going in. You know, these guys transition out very well. Um, and fortunately, most of the things that they do now with the Tommy John, with the ligament that they throw at their elbow, you know, we can rebuild that ligament. And that's the beauty, even for the weekend warriors, don't be afraid to do stuff. Because the advances that we've made in sports orthopedics, we can fix it. Don't be afraid to break it. Because I can fix it. Just go out there, do, it. do your exercises, go at it, have fun, and if it breaks, don't worry about it. I'll fix it, and we'll get you back, and then you keep it going. There you see, Dad. Just get out there, build that shed, and if you break an arm or something, yeah. just go see Dr. I'll, Smith. I'll, I'll fix it. Put you all back together again. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, listen, thanks so much, Dr. Smith. It was great to have you on the show. Lots Better. of great information. Stay with us, because we're coming back with Boots and Hearts.